Over the last few months, Google has made lots of changes to their ads platform. Whether it's one of the more recent updates like search themes in Performance Max, which you can learn about right here, or if it's rolling out an entire new interface by the end of the year. You know, no big deal. Again, if you want to learn about that, you can check it out right here. One of the other updates is they've rolled out an entire new campaign type, Demand Gen. Now, maybe you've heard about this because you've seen the alert to upgrade your discovery campaigns to Demand Gen. Maybe you've heard about it in industry news, or maybe this is the first time you're hearing about it and you just want to get the lay of the land. Well, no matter what, this video will hopefully answer all of the questions for all of those groups of people. In it, we're going to run through a demand gen campaign setup, talk about when it might be reasonable to test in your accounts. This Pay Media Pros video is sponsored by Optio, the smarter, more efficient way to manage Google Ads. Optio's platform operates as a second pair of eyes on your accounts, regularly monitoring performance trends to make data-driven optimization suggestions for keyword strategies, bid optimizations, ad copy creation, and more. Better yet, you can save time by implementing their suggested changes directly in their user-friendly interface. Optio is extending their free trial period for Pay Media Pros viewers for 60 days, meaning you get two full months of testing and using Optio on your accounts before you pay a dime. If you're interested in giving it a shot, click the link on the screen right now or in the video description to get started. To get started with this walkthrough, we're going to just create an entire new campaign in one of the client accounts that we have. So for that, I'm just going to come over to Create New Campaign. We're going to go ahead and make a new one instead of resume a draft. And the first thing we need to do is choose our campaign objective. Demand gen campaigns can work with either a sales, leads, website traffic, product and brand consideration, or create a campaign without a goals guidance. You will not be able to use demand gen with any of the brand awareness, app promotion, or local store visits. And since I'm already selected on it, I'm going to choose create a campaign without a goals guidance. All of the other ones will have pretty much the same process. Next, we need to choose the campaign type, which you guessed it is demand gen. And then you get to choose the conversion goals that you want for your campaign performance optimization. By default, every new campaign you build is going to use the account level conversion goals. We do have a video that walks you through how to set those up and change those if you want to. If you're interested in learning more about that, you can check out the video at the top of the screen right now. For now, let's just click continue. And here we'll get into the setup of your demand gen campaign. Over on the left, you can see the navigation within the account. So we have the campaign level where we're at right now. We have the ad group and the ad. Then we'll review the campaign. Those are going to be the steps that we've got. Each of these little three dots does have another menu. So if we click on them, you can either pause the campaign. At the ad group level, you can duplicate, pause, delete, or create a new ad group. And at the ad level, pretty similar. Duplicate, pause, delete, or create new. These little duplicate options within the ad groups and ads are really helpful if you decide that you want to make just slight variations on your existing targeting while retaining all the ads, or if you wanna change up all the ads while retaining some of the targeting, just makes for a little easier process than creating something from scratch every time. The first thing you do is give your campaign a name. Since I don't intend on saving this, I'm just gonna leave it as demand gen, doesn't really matter. The next thing we get to do is focus on a campaign goal. By default, it's going to opt you into conversions if you have conversion tracking set up. This is where we're trying to get more sales and optimize toward conversion actions by using a conversion based bid strategy. If you're mostly interested in awareness and branding, but again, you could not use that campaign objective, you might want to optimize for clicks where you get more traffic, engagement or leads utilizing a cost per click bidding strategy. And then the last option is conversion value in this account. I can't use it because we're not using values tied to our conversions. But if you are, or you're in e-commerce, something like that, having a campaign goal of conversion value allows you to utilize bidding strategies that will try to get you the most value for your conversions. So effectively, the biggest change here is going to be, yes, what you are trying to optimize for, whether it's value, conversions, or clicks, but it's also going to dictate the bidding strategy. Campaign goal of conversion value is going to optimize basically toward a target ROAS or maximize ROAS bidding strategy. Clicks will utilize that cost per click bidding strategy. Conversions is going to do max conversions or target CPA. So depending on what you're trying to optimize for for this demand gen campaign, make sure you choose the campaign goal that aligns with your marketing targets. The next section is around conversion goals. Quite frankly, I'm not sure why this section is here since we already selected it on the previous page. But if you wanted to make edits as you got further into this part, you can do that here. And then going back to the bidding strategy that I just mentioned, 
since we were on the conversions focus, we can set an optional target cost per action here. If you leave this blank, your campaign will automatically optimize to maximize conversions. But if you need to focus on a specific target CPA, you can add that here. For now, I'm gonna skip it and head into the remaining sections for campaign setup. Next is going to be budget and dates. The only slightly quirky thing about demand gen is you can only set a daily budget. You cannot set lifetime budgets for this campaign objective. I'm gonna go ahead and just add in a value just to make sure that we've got something here so it won't throw errors at me. But as you can see, once you add in a value, Google does have suggestions for you. We have run demand gen in this account before, which is why it's suggesting to use a $400 daily budget rather than the 100 that I've put in here. But I'm not gonna do that. If we scroll down a little bit more, you can set your start and end dates. Pretty basic there. And then these last four sections down below have Two interesting pieces and two pretty standard. Let's start with the interesting. First is location and language. So if I expand this, you can see that we get a big message here. Google recommends setting location and language at the ad group level rather than at the campaign level to better align with all of the targeting that you're using at that ad group level. Just like many of the other campaign types in Google Ads, all of your targeting will live at the ad group level, which is why they suggest you focus on it there. You can toggle this to have the campaign level language and location settings, which will then look very similar to all other campaign types that we have. For now, I'm just gonna leave it at the ad group level so it won't continuously show me suggestions that it has. But if you decide that you wanna have all of the location and language settings at the campaign level as opposed to ad group, you can do that. The biggest thing to note is that if you turn this on at the campaign level, you cannot change it after you publish the campaign. And any of the settings that you have at the ad group level will be removed and defaulted back to campaign level. So think through your account strategy, decide whether campaign or ad group level makes the most sense for you. The next interesting section is around devices. You can see there's quite a number of details already on here. So if we open this up, you default to showing on all eligible devices, which includes computers, mobile, tablet and TV screens. But if you wanna select specific targeting for devices, you can choose this option here. And then we have lots of different available targets. You can opt into and out of major types of devices. Again, those four big ones. But then you can also narrow down into specific operating systems, device models, and network. So for whatever reason, you only wanna target people on the AT&T network in the United States using an iPhone 15, you can do that. The last two sections are pretty simple. Ad schedule, you can set this just like you would for any other campaign. And then the campaign URL options are going to be exactly what they are everywhere else. If you have a tracking template, final URL suffix, and custom parameters. For now, let's keep moving along and go to our ad group. As I mentioned, this is where all of the targeting is going to live, and that's what we're trying to focus on here. First, give your ad group a name. Don't leave it as ad group one, like I'm going to. But then since we left all of the location and language targeting at the ad group level, we would need to set those here. Again, location targeting is the same as it always has been. Languages, same as it always has been. The part that's gonna be different is once we get down into this audiences section down here. Real quick before we start this, notice over on the right, you'll be able to see the estimated impressions that we have for each week as well as potentially estimated conversions as well. So as we're going through and making changes here, or as you're tweaking things on your end, make sure that you're paying attention to the estimated volume and campaign results in those right-hand boxes. In demand gen campaigns, we focus on targeting audiences, and these can be made up of lots of different targeting types within a singular audience. Here you can see that it allows you to reach people based on who they are, their interests and habits, what they're actively researching, or how they've interacted with your business. So let's go ahead and click add an audience. As I've mentioned, we've run a demand gen campaign in this account before. So if you have existing audiences, you can hover over them, click on them to select them for the account. If you do that, it'll then apply your audience here. And if you wanted to change it in any way, you can click the pencil to edit, or you can duplicate the audience here. So then you can make a copy of it and edit that one. Or once you've decided that you don't want this one, you can either click switch audience or click the X and then add an audience again. But up here in the top right of this builder, you can create a new audience from scratch as well. Now I'm not gonna go too far into each of these different segments because otherwise this video would be very long, but let's talk about it at a high level. First, give your audience a name. Just like with everything else I always talk about on this channel, make sure that this naming convention makes sense to you so that when you go back later, You'll have an understanding of who is in this audience and you won't have to click into, review, and analyze that audience before deciding to apply it to any campaign 
or edit it in any way, shape or form. So just make your naming convention pretty clear here. The next thing I want to call out is the logic setting for the targeting for a demand gen audience. And that's listed right here where it says include people who match any of the following. So anyone that you add in the sections here for targeting, you can match to any of them. They are not going to be and statements. They are going to be or statements. So anyone who shows up in any of these groups that we'll talk about in a minute will be part of your target audience and the exclusions operate the same way. But again, we'll talk about that when we get there. So the first is going to be a custom segment. We have a video that covers everything that you would need to know about custom segments. You can check that out at the top of the screen right now. But to add a custom segment, you just need to check in the box here. You can then add any that Google has suggested right off the bat. You can browse all of the custom segments that are in this account, or you can create a new custom segment from scratch where you can add in keywords, websites, apps to find that targeting option that you want. The next option is going to be your data, which is based on your remarketing audiences of people who have interacted with your business. Again, they will suggest stuff at the top. You can browse all of your audiences, or you can create a new segment, which will basically follow these around custom combinations, website visitors, YouTube users, customer lists, all of those different options for retargeting in Google ads. The next is going to be a lookalike segment, which is brand new for Google ads in a demand gen campaign. They've had a feature that is similar with similar audiences, but a lookalike is new. This is where you reach people who are similar to your seed list. So if I were to click in here, we could either search or browse for our existing lookalikes, which I have built one before, or you can create a new segment. Again, give it a good segment name, but then you provide a seed list. These are all of the people that you're hoping that Google will find new users who behave like them. So think a list of your customers, your high value leads, anybody who is an ideal target for you, and you wanna find more people who are like that, that's where you add them in a seed list. You can add up to 10 seed lists for this lookalike. And so we can go through the next stuff. I'm gonna add one real quick. I just chose login because when customers log in on this website, that's a pretty good indicator that that's a good solid list of people we wanna find more people like. You can then add in your location, which is going to be based on the country. So for this, we would use United States. And then down at the bottom, we get segment reach. If you advertise on the Meta or Facebook ads platform, this is gonna feel pretty similar. You can choose whether you want a narrow match, which is gonna be about 2.5% of the population. You can choose balanced, which is 5%, or broad, which is 10%. We'll probably put together a video in the future that talks a bit more in depth about lookalike segments on Google Ads, but for now, that should give you enough of an overview to get started. The next option you have is around interests and detailed demographics. So again, you can click in here and you can find that you can use in-market segments, life events, and more. I'm not gonna go through that right now because they're pretty standard to all other Google Ads campaigns. But then if we scroll down, as I mentioned earlier, there are exclusions you can also add. So if you wanna add certain exclusions, you just check the box here. You can exclude certain remarketing lists or lookalike segments. Lastly, you can narrow down to only specific demographic information. So if you only wanna target men, women, or people within a certain age, you can do that. You can also add in additional demographics around parental status and household income. As you can see, there are quite a lot of indicators you can use to build this audience. Just remember that these demographics here are going to narrow your audience, so it will operate as an and statement to any of the targeting you have, but any of the exclusions you apply are going to match anything and exclude them. And any of the targeting that you have up here, whether it's custom segment, lookalike, interests, all of those are going to operate as an or statement. So somebody only has to fit into one of the four categories that you have applied here, and they will be part of your target audience. I'm gonna click out of this, and just for sake of having some targeting in here, I'm gonna use the existing target audience that we have. You can see over on the right, it expects that we would have 3.3 billion impressions. And one thing that will help narrow that is to actually come down here to the next setting, which is optimized targeting. Google loves to help you find your target audience across all of its different platforms. So they automatically opt you into optimized targeting which they estimate is going to give you about 20% more conversions than it would if you didn't use it. Personally, I think with all the different targeting options you were just able to apply, you'd probably wanna start without optimized targeting on and then opt into it only if you see good performance. So for now, I'm gonna uncheck this box and you'll see that my average impressions is gonna go down by about a third to 2.2 billion instead of 3.3. The last thing you can do at the ad group level is set up your URL options, just like any other campaign. So now let's go ahead and skip to the ad and talk through just the last portion that we have here pretty quickly. If any of you run any type of paid social campaigns, you'll notice that this feels a lot like 
a social ad setup. The first thing you do is get to choose what format, whether it's single image, video ad, or the new ad format, carousel image ad. Now we're not gonna spend too much time on these because we do have another video plan to go through each of the different ad formats and show you what they look like. But just so you have some understanding of what goes into it at this point, I'll leave it on single image. As we scroll down, you can see that you can add up to 20 images, five logos, five headlines, five descriptions. As we keep scrolling down, you can use a call to action, business name, and apply any of your URL options here. Just like any other ad format that you have on Google Ads, you can preview it in either a YouTube, Discover, or Gmail format for mobile or desktop. The video ad format, which is just below this, is gonna feel pretty similar. Again, you can add up to five videos rather than images, one logo, five headlines, five long headlines, five descriptions. You also have the call to action, business name, and site links are available for this, along with all of the URL options that you would have. Then the last ad format is going to be a carousel image ad. As I mentioned, this is the new ad format for Google Ads. The other two are pretty similar to what we've seen in the past. But if we scroll down here, you'll we'll see the first thing we need to do is build out cards, just like we would for Facebook carousel ads. You can add up to 10 individual cards. If I click in here, you can see that each card can support up to three images, one headline, final URL, and a call to action. Once you have your 10 cards added, you can also add your logo, and then you have the supporting text for the entire ad, which includes the headline, description, and business name, as well as all of the URL options. Obviously, I didn't add any targeting options. I didn't add any creative, so this campaign is not gonna let me save it. But when you get finished, you can review the campaign before you set it live, just to have one last pass at it. And that's pretty much it. I already said in this video that we did run a demand gen campaign in this account for this client. We're still gathering some of the data on that. And depending on how that turns out, we might do a follow-up video that talks about reviewing the campaign performance, trying to optimize or not. But it's still too early to tell whether or not this campaign type is gonna work for this account, but it's at least worth us to run a test for it. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of how a demand generation campaign can work, who you can target, and how you can craft your ads to get your message in front of the right audience. If you have any other questions about demand gen campaign setup, or pretty much anything else on the Google Ads platform, feel free to leave us a note in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.